So we, we find ourselves joining in Triannuary. Triannuary, yeah. Triannuary for some sad folk out there. But we're, this is Triannuary for us. And I think what we're trying to do is we're trying to understand some more technical beer terms. Did they try any more times? Yes, this is Triannuary, and we thought that we would celebrate that by doing something. We've had a couple of quests from, from you guys and from social to do, which is to bust through some technical jargon that yeah. brewers might use. And Brad is going to bash through some terms that yeah. he collected across yeah. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and the YouTube channel where people asked what does that mean? So Brad's uh -huh. got them all written there. He's going to yeah. quiz me and chip in when I fuck up. I'm going to hold them up to camera, a la um, Bob Dylan slash, what's the, what the... Andrew Lincoln in Love Actually. Yeah, Love Actually, the Love Actually thing, yeah. 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 I'm going to pour a beer while you read the first one. Okay, Johnny. So this one is diacetyl. 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 So that is a byproduct of fermentation. It tastes like butter or butterscotch or browned butter. Uh, it's very easy to detect. It's a kind of sweet buttery smell. Uh, it's rounded out in lagering, which is why lagering takes so long. Um, or it can happen in all fermentations and you just have to give it a diacetyl rest at a certain temperature yeah. and you're away. Next one, Johnny. Wet hopped. So that has nothing to do with dry hop. They're not actually opposites. Yes. Wet hop is when you use hops that haven't been dried yes. in your beer. So they go straight from the farm, straight into the beer, and they have to take less than 24 hours to do that. Like kind of grapey, soft, grassy aromas, like the fresh yeah. grass kind of aromas and stuff that's super delicate. Those don't get destroyed during the drying process, yeah. and you get them by just boiling them up super fresh. Ester. So that's another byproduct of fermentation, much like diacetyl. There's hundreds of them. They all smell different. They're just chemical compounds that smell yeah. and taste of certain things. Um, so you could have banana. banana you guy. could have uh, nail polish, mm. which is in lots of Belgian beers. Mm. Uh, you can have all these different compounds that add up to the juicy kind of aromas we get yeah. in New England IPAs. So they're chemical compounds that, that add to flavour. Yeah, it's beer. like a yeast fart. Amazing. Yeast farts. <laughs> <laughs> From yeast farts, Johnny, yeah. to adjuncts. Adjuncts used to be anything involved in beer um, in the mash kind of phase that mm -hmm. wasn't malt. So you'd be talking about wheat, oats, rice, rice hulls. But recently it started to become more about things that are added perhaps towards the end of fermentation or to the yeah. boil, different flavorings like coffee, chocolate, fucking marshmallow. Money. Money, pizza, P frozen pizza. pizza's been added. Doubles and triples. Okay, so that cuts two ways. You can have doubles and triples in Belgian brewing, so they're specific styles. So a triple is a dry, uh, estery, blonde ale, yeah. around about 9% usually. A double is a dark, raisiny, rum and raisiny, caramelly beer at about yeah. 7%. That name came from the fact that uh, it was supposed to be double the amount of malt. So it's weird, it goes from a single, which is blonde, yeah. to a double, which is dark, yeah. to a triple, which it's is blonde, blonde again. again. To a quad, which is dark again. <sighs> to a quadruple. It's Belgians. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Okay, so it all gets a bit confusing, but with, with the IPA stakes, could we say that it's, it's, it's sort of the double and the triple is purely to do with the alcohol content. Yeah, I think uh, a normal IPA is up to about 8%, a double yeah. might be up to 10%, yeah. a triple might be up to 12%, and a quadruple, I don't even want to try a quadruple IPA, but I've seen them. Yeah. Uh, anything above that is a rough uh, definition of those. But oh. why they're doubles and triples is nonsense. Acetic and lactic. So a lactic fermentation is one that has lactobacillus in it. Mm -hmm. It will drop the pH, which makes it sour, uh, and it will taste lemony, sherbety, bright, citrusy, sour. Mm -hmm. Acetic uh, is made by Acetobacter, a different bacteria, which, uh, if you think about Flemish reds, it's very common in that. It tastes a bit balsamic-y and mm -hmm. vinegary. It's also what you get when an old real ale is pulled. So right. if you get a, a sour real ale from a bad pub mm -hmm. and it tastes vinegary and nasty, that's acetic. Mixed firm. Mixed fermentation, we've got a video on this, which we'll put at the end, where we explained all the difference between mixed fermentation. The most basic way of looking at it is if there's more than one thing fermenting or eating sugar yeah. in a process. So It's like jazz beer, isn't it, Johnny? It's jazz beer. 
So you could have you could have Saccharomyces, Saccharomyces yes. just a normal brewing yeast. Yes. You could then add Brettanomyces, yeah. suddenly it's mixed fermentation. You could add Lactobacillus, which is eating up some sugar and lowering the pH, yeah. Acetobacter, yeah. Pediococcus, all these different things. But it's saying it's not just one thing doing the job here. Yeah. There's all kinds of chemical processes happening. Double dry hopped, DDH, mate. Perceived wisdom until about five, 10 years ago was that you would dry hop right at the end of fermentation. So you'd wait for the fermentation to finish. Mm. You'd add a load of uh, dried hops at the end at whatever temperature you felt like. Uh, and you'd add loads of aroma and some flavor to a beer. Right. Double dry hopping is where you still did that, but you also did one during active fermentation. So a separate addition at a separate temperature at a separate time. And you're going to get different characteristics from those hops because when you add hops at different temperatures, you get different things like when you're brewing, uh, when you're boiling. Like if you add it 100 or you add it 80 degrees during the boil, hmm. you'll get different characteristics. So you're trying to get this biotransformation, which I think is also in that list. I, I think I remember seeing it. Uh, so I won't spoil the surprise about biotransformation, but it's basically adding hops at two different times during fermentation or afterwards. Some people use it to say we've added double the amount of hops. You're wrong. Lagered. Lagering, Johnny. Lagering. So we've also done a video on that one uh, with uh, We Are Lager, the beer festival, or mm. lager festival, I should say. Mm. Uh, lagering is a process. It comes from lagern, which is German to store. Um, it's basically when you cold ferment a beer for a long yeah. time uh, and mature it for a long time at lower temperatures. And something, something interesting happens to the yeast, doesn't it? So... Uh, Lager yeast is a specific kind. You've got ale yeast and you've got lager yeast. That's the difference between ale and lager. Mm. Uh, and you always have to lager a lager yeast, really, because it kicks off all kinds of untasty stuff and takes a long time to sort yes. it all out again because it's at a lower temperature. Bottle conditioned. Uh, bottle conditioned, really simple process, is where you add sugar to a flat beer before you put it in bottle, and then that sugar is then eaten up by the remaining yeast, so you get carbonation in the bottle, so it's a way of naturally carbonating beer yeah. in the package. So in Lambic production, that's all bottle fermented. It has mm. to be to be called an Oud Gurs, mm. um, and that's just literally sugar that's left over in the brett kicking off, and that gives you carbonation. So no traditional Gurs is a force carbonated. It's also very common in real ale. To be a British real ale, you have to have bottle or cask conditioned it you can't add extraneous co2 to it it has to be naturally fermented through through the process of, of sugar fermentation attenuation attenuation is the process of so sugar uh, being eaten up by yeast the mm. attenuation is the amount of sugar that's being eaten so if you mm. say that something is well attenuated it means lots of sugar is gone or the amount of sugar that you wanted is gone so a highly attenuated beer is a very yeah. dry beer a beer yeah, that has no sweetness a low attenuated beer is a very sweet beer because there's still lots of sugar left so lots of Belgium stuff is low attenuated. Low attenuated, exactly. Lots of lots of sweet residual sugars left. Fruit IPA would be super high attenuation. Super high attenuation. Yeah. yeah. Right. IBUs. IBU International Bittering Unit. It's oh. a measure of the amount of bitterness you'll get in a beer, which is a combination of how much alpha acid, which is a, a compound found in hops, is in there. Alpha acids are bitter. It's how much of those are in it versus at what temperature you added it. Mm. So uh, these alpha acids isomerize and turn bitter at certain temperatures. So mm. you do a calculation between how much you added at what time and you'll get the theoretical IBU. But it's worth noting that even dry hops, even if you add them at zero degrees, will add some bitterness. Um, and obviously there's perceived bitterness from adding, I know, grapefruit peel or really roasted malt, which will add bitterness to. Oxidized. Oxidized, we've done a video on this where we took four punk IPAs and put them in different situations to see how quickly they oxidized and skunked. Uh, that'll be at the end as well. Oxidization is the process of oxygen uh, dissolving into the beer. Uh, oxygen has lots of nasty effects on beer. It destroys lots of different flavors and starts to taste it, make it taste of wet cardboard is the most common descriptor. Mm. Wet cardboard or like really cheap caramel. Uh, the flavors that you'll get. You'll also see the beer will go slightly darker as it oxidizes. This is the longest word of the whole thing. It barely fits on a piece of paper. Biotransformation. It's not just applicable to beer. Biotransformation happens all the time in the world. Mm. Uh, and that's what lots of brewers aim for uh, when they dry hop early. When yes. they're doing the double dry hopping during active fermentation, uh, they're hoping that the yeast processes will interfere with the dry hopping processes mm. and you'll produce new things. The hop, hop oils might bind with uh, the, f the phenols and the esters uh, or with the proteins in the malt. And mm. that's biotransformation. Fuck you now. Jesus, uh, this man needs a drink, I think. I've had plenty of drinks. We've been drinking our three favourites <laughs> from uh, Big in 2020, which you can also watch at the end of this. Let us know any words that you 
don't understand or want somebody to explain or that you think people constantly get wrong and you think you just you just want to you just want to air your grievances about that i'm winging it most of the time mate let's be Brad honest is winging it yeah. there you go yeah and please do enjoy our next video next week we'll be doing stupid shit that beer geeks say in a similar format so join us for that too cheers, cheers.